So were you getting in trouble in school and stuff? Cause did you have that yeah, anger that sort of pushed you in that direction? Nah, I was a class clown. Mm. Yeah. When I went to one school, it was one black kid in the whole school. It was an all-white school. Right. Do you even know about gang shit when you first moved to Florida? Yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. You already yeah. knew about that. I already knew that up in Boston. So that's really where I had like my first impression on gangs. How established was the gang shit in Boston though at that time? It's not at all. It doesn't seem like it would have been. There was somebody older than me. He was probably like 15, but being young as fuck, I'm looking at him like, oh, that's the big bro. Right. And he was blood. You know what I mean? So he telling me like, we riding out, hanging out. And he's like, oh yeah, you, you that. So from that early age, I'm screaming on that, even though I'm, I'm really not. One thing about me, I don't claim a specific neighborhood. One thing about 1090 Jake is that when he tells his life story, he likes to lie a lot. And in this No Jumper interview that we're about to analyze, you'll see exactly what I mean. For those of you who may not be aware of the guy, let me give you a lay of the land. 1090 Jake is a YouTuber who got his start in the prison genre of YouTube telling tales of his time in a Florida prison. He also had aspirations of becoming a rap star. That's actually the reason he has both of those face tats. Folks would grow tired of hearing about Jake's old prison tales, and this is when Jake decided to mix the anger for his failed rap career and add that to his YouTube channel, and he began to expose rappers for snitching. Whatever what could be more of a get? snitch thing than getting yeah. a bunch of people you don't even know in trouble? Yeah. Yup, that's right. He is a rat. Who rats on rats? How peculiar it is that the 1090 Jake channel is just rats on rats on rats. But as it often tends to do, the pendulum would eventually swing back the other way, and 1090 Jake himself would in fact get exposed for snitching. Not once but twice Jake would be exposed for snitching in two separate cases. Jake would manage to slither his way out of the first round of paperwork. But now more recently new paperwork has emerged of 1090 Jake snitching on a fellow inmate in prison. And in this new paperwork we get a handwritten letter from 1090 Jake, written in perfect grammar. 1090 Jake refers to the inmate by name in the opening lines of the letter. He then goes on to accuse the prison guards of being violent to the inmates, and then finally ends the letter with, Please, help me. So in today's video, we take a look at the first 1090 Jake No Jumper interview, and then we will rip it to shreds. So join me in today's segment of Rats on Rats on Rats. Adam starts out the interview with a big gangster introduction for 1090 Jake, and then immediately follows it up with asking about Jake's full life story. Jake seems to be ill prepared for the question though, and appears to be taken by surprise. Adam22 is genuinely excited for this interview, because Adam was under the impression that 1090 Jake was the real deal. But as we will soon see, Adam would be sadly disappointed, because 1090 Jake's life story quickly falls apart, right in front of our very eyes. You see, 1090 Jake has this nasty habit of adding caveats to any area of his life that don't appear to be all that gangster. The real problem with 1090 Jake is that he is causing problems for actual gang members. But yet, 1090 Jake doesn't have your typical gang member story. Normally joining a gang is less of a choice and more of a culture pressure. So it makes sense to join a gang when your father is also in that gang and your brothers, sisters, and cousins are either in the gang, or at the very least they are affiliated with the gang. Where joining a gang is basically a rite of passage, and where talking to the police is forbidden, and anyone who does so will be ostracized from the gang, lose their respect, and in many cases, lose their lives. And in the middle of it all we have 1090 Jake as the gangster gatekeeper checking to make sure that no one is talking to police in any hood across the world, and also making sure that no one is claiming to be a fake blood, because that seems to really make Jake upset. In this first clip that I'm about to show you, we will see 1090 Jake doing what he does best when he calls out someone for being a fake gangster. And well, that's because. You're not really a gangster until you're approved by the almighty 1090 Jake. So, I hit up the Island Boys, because they're talking about, <laughs> they, uh, they were saying they were sex, money, murder. Right, yeah. All right, well, you in the state of Florida, so mm -hmm. if you're going to be that, there's a specific motherfucker you have to know. 
I wanted to know if he knew that specific person. That's how you figure out who ain't what they said it is. Oh, thank goodness. We have beat 1090 Jake here to check the island, boys. I mean, if it wasn't for Jake, we all would have been fooled, and we would have really believed that the island boys were legitimate bloods. Have you ever heard of the expression that you are what you hate? Does Jake think he's a gangster for calling out the island boys? Oh please, give me a break. The only difference between 1090 Jake and the island boys is a few hundred pounds. Okay, so in this next clip we will hear all about Jake's rough childhood. For a year, where at? Or not even a year, I think it was a month. I don't remember because I was so young. Oh, I was okay. like two. We moved there, and then our house got robbed right after Christmas, and we got the fuck out. Yeah, yeah so New Hampshire's good for that, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea about nothing. I thought it was just snowboarding and all that, but <laughs> I found out I actually lived there and uh, it didn't go too good, right? But for me, I grew up all over the place. You know, my parents, uh, they separated before I was born, right? So I grew up really. It was two different households, and I can't say it was like a, a bad a bad home, but it was hostile at times because whichever parent I'm with is talking about the other one. Uh. So it's a lot of situations, like if I'm getting dropped off in the weekend at this house, I gotta go get the child support check, and you know, they're not even trying to see each other, so right. it was kind of a hostile environment. It wasn't a bad home as far as like poverty and all that, but it wasn't a happy home either. Whoa, did you hear that? Ladies and gentlemen, that is the most emo freak story I've ever heard, and it certainly doesn't sound like a gang member in the making. Yeah, were your parents sort of in the streets or outside like that at all? I never knew anything about any of that until I grew up. Mm. So like my mother, nah, not at all. My father, I always had a gangster impression of him. Mm. So I'm mm. Italian and Irish. So the whole family big on like all the mob shit, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm always looking at him like, oh, he must be in something. He must be in something because just the way he moved, he's got a friend on every block we go to. People always pulling up. I think I had toys in there, some shit, and I found a, a gun. You know what I mean? So he caught me when I found it. He trying to tell me it's a BB gun. Did you catch that one? Jake says, no, my parents weren't in the streets, but I think my daddy was secretly a gangster. And don't even get me started on the guy's BB gun story. It's absolute nonsense. If your dad said it's a BB gun, then I'm sure it was a BB gun and not an actual real gun. But let's take the bait and play along with Jake's ridiculous story and pretend that it was an actual real gun for the sake of the argument. Well then, so what? Is it supposed to be a big deal? I mean, I know plenty of dads who own guns, but that doesn't make them gangster. This is what I meant earlier when I talked about 1090 Jake's gangster caveats. He's gonna throw the word gun into his story at every opportunity he has in order to make his upbringing appear to be more gangster than it actually was. And in this next clip, 1090 Jake will tell us about how he got his first handgun at the age of 13, two months after moving to Florida. And then Mr. Class Clown was supposedly under investigation for selling guns and drugs in school. Definitely. So were you getting in trouble in school and stuff? Cause did you have that yeah, anger that sort of pushed you in that direction? Nah, I was a class clown. Mm. Yeah, I was just, I didn't do shit. Uh, it got to a point where teachers wouldn't even give me no uh, schoolwork. I just, I liked to hang out. I liked it because it was fun, but right. as far as getting in trouble, nah, I got suspended a shitload of times. It really got worse, like middle school, high school. Right. High school, freshman year, they had me under investigation for selling ecstasy, guns in the school. So we had a whole little situation going on. So, I mean, you're in elementary school and presumably you're not really uh, selling any illegal stuff. At what no, point, at what point does that kind of kick I in? I wasn't on shit till middle school. Okay. Really, the year before I moved down to Florida. Right. So you left Boston, the Boston area at what age? I moved down to Florida when I was 13. Okay. Yeah. And so it's a totally different environment or? Yeah. I moved down to Florida within like, Two months, I had my first gun down there. Really? Yeah, it was easy. And you hadn't been thinking about getting a gun when you were in Mass? Fuck no, but I came down here and everybody got everything. All right, so he wasn't really a gangster until a year before he moved to Florida, which would make him 12 years old. Do you guys smell that? That smells exactly like bullshit. Oh my god, it's awful. Do you really expect us to believe any of this crap? I mean... Come on, 
for the love of God. This is Bobby Hill we're talking about here. In this next clip, we're about to have Jake explain to us what 1090 even means and why he has it a part of his name. We known as being aggressive. We known as 1090. We known as, you know what I'm saying? Like What's 1090 again? I mean, there's a couple of different ways you could break that bitch down, but it's more or less what's most publicly known as set tripping. Right. And what is set tripping? Running down on motherfuckers. You could be blood. If you fuck it up and you doing this weird shit or whatever, we the ones that finna handle that. Right. We're not sparing you just because you blood. And then, you know, you could set trip on really any other gang too, but it's just like putting it on my name, I went at it with more bloods inside of prison than anyone else. We got so many fucking, like, we got so much numbers, we'll have inner beef because right. there's no one else to beef with. Mm. So that's where set tripping comes from. You know what I'm saying? That's why I put it on my shit, just like somebody I have, you know, ABK, whatever, EBK this, whatever, anybody killer, everybody killer. That's where that came from for me. Okay, dokie. So there you have it. He gets his name from beefing with his own crew because there is no one else to beef with. Gang gang. Interesting. So Jake prides himself on calling out fake gang members. But while Jake was defending his most recent snitching accusations, we got to see a glimpse into Jake's prison gang. And oh my goodness, I was absolutely shocked to see that the 1090 Jake gang was just a couple of dirty white boys. I find it rather interesting considering Jake claims to be one of the only known white bloods. Oh, man. Now, we have to add two more to the list of white blood gang members. So I guess that certified white blood gang members aren't very hard to come by after all. Damn it, Jake, you lied to us again. I think it's appropriate to end today's segment of Rats on Rats on Rats with a clip of 1090 Jake defending himself against his most recent snitching accusations. So, but basically, so you're saying that when you was right, because they, they in the, uh, the shit, it says, so help me please and shit. So you agree that was you wrote all that shit out. The whole, whole thing I wrote, bro, I'm, I'm right into the warden. Like, look, this the situation I'm in. You got to make it sound some type of something. Nah, like, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm going to be like, like, hey, hey, warden, I'm big gangster, but let me out of confinement. You think they finna? Nah. Oh, okay. I got it now. Jake is only big gangster sometimes. And sometimes he's just the class clown who also tends to be a bit of a tattletale. So, all right, so niggas is saying, they saying that a grievance is still a statement. That's what I'm seeing in the comments. They said niggas is saying you ain't supposed to write no grievance or anything. Yeah, tell them sucking dick is still sucking dick. Are you writing a statement when you get in a car accident? Or you just letting somebody hit your car? That's what you're going to do? You that gangster that when someone hits your car, you ain't going to go to the police department and get the shit you got to write out. Nah, because you so gangster. That's what you're doing? Now, this is classic snitch language. The truth is that Jake wasn't in a car accident. He was in a prison fight, and he got hit in the head with a sock filled with rocks and then snitched on not only the person who hit him, but Jake snitched on everyone who was involved. You know, everybody gonna have their side or how they feel about the situation. Yeah, but you, it, you know it, why? Because they heard I made a million dollars off of this shit. That's why they finna, you know. So that's why niggas, yes. so niggas is. See, this is like, this, this the thing that off. happens in life, right? People either forget about you, they come kill you, or they try to politic you out the way. That's what they're but, trying to, they're trying to politic me out the way. No, I'm gonna give you reasons why you shouldn't like him. He's white. We gotta, we gotta stand up together. That's what motherfuckers try to, you know? Because they know if ain't nothing finna unite some people, is we gonna throw the race card in there. Oh boy, did you seriously just imply that people think you a snitch because you're white? Are you kidding me? What kind of emo freak excuse is this? No, Jake. People think you're a snitch because you gave names to the police. It's really quite simple. Yeah. He's white. He ain't supposed to... It's the same shit Charles the White be doing. He know how to get people moving. He know how to hype the crowd and then that shit dies the fuck out. Yeah, so yeah, they, but that's the thing. That's what's really fucking it up. Cause it's like, nigga, 1090J, the nigga that's disposing the paperwork. So they ain't trying to see your name on anything. No grievances, you know what I'm saying? Nothing like that. So that's really like, got they don't, they like, don't want to see my name on no jumper either, making a bag off of this shit. That's what they, yeah. they really don't want to see. You said you followed my nigga King AK47? Let me add him on. Yeah. Man. See what he got. Call AK. Uh, AK, hop on in, man. We need, I, don't, I, don't, I need your perspective, bro. And I know can't nobody in Cali say nothing because Greedo, Greedo's fine, right? You know? Man, what the f 
fuck going on, man? Hey, Rebo, what up, Jake, bro? Up, what you, you know my deal going dark? hard, nigga. What's going on? What you in the dark? Huh? I'm on sad. You know, big ass. We ain't going to say too much, though, but. Yeah, don't do that. What's man, up, though? Man, what the fuck going on? Nigga, talk about your boy, your boy, your boy, Jake, Jake. I'm like, man, what's up? What happened, man? Dude fired me up. They took us to the back. Wait, you said the police his said name? Huh? You said his name? Yeah, I wrote everything that was in the DR that I had. Mm. Everything in there. You said dude fires you up to what? Dude fired me up, and then the police beat the fuck out of everybody in the back room. Jake, man, you said his name, bro. You know what they about to say, bro. What are they going to say? They going to say you a rat, bro. You don't know this, you know this, bro. Except for when they said that I flipped this dude, and then this one flipped the other one. No, I see what you said, but you really should have said I got hit in the head. I don't remember who the fuck hit me. You feel me? Man, I, I got that. in trouble. I thought, he got I in, we all already had got in trouble and all already had got sentenced to 120 days of confinement. No, that's, all true. That. that's true. I thought we weren't supposed to put people names and shit, though. Even if I mean, it was I'm, true. I'm, 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 I'm. Thanks for joining me on today's segment of Rats on Rats on Rats. I hope to see you all in a future video. Whoa, just look at that subscribe button. I'd for sure tap that if I were you. This has been Alan for now.